Hello! Hi! If you enjoy anything in this video, you should consider the following. Subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and on TikTok, where I make other forms of content and where I post my other content. Alright, cool. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's up? It's me, Fashile, and this is gonna be a really different type of video for me. I have been seeing a lot, and I really mean a lot, of discourse about gaming being dead, Gaming not being fun anymore, gaming isn't anything to look forward to anymore, and I'm looking at all this shit and I'm like, what are you people talking about? Gaming's not dead, we just got a bunch of new releases and things like that matter. And through listening and watching the many videos that I've seen, the tweets that I've read, the TikToks that I've saw, it kind of pushed me to a point where I'm like, okay, maybe I'll throw my own commentary into this and talk about it for however long this video winds up being. And full disclaimer, right? I am very biased towards Japanese games, Eastern developed games. However, I hope to convey that even with my biases, I am aware of why some people feel that gaming is dead, why some people feel that gaming is boring, why some people feel that gaming isn't fun anymore. I'm going to try and look at all sides of this, and this is going to be my very first video essay, period. So I hope this turns out well, and TLDR, or TLDW, if you don't want to watch the entire video, in summary, gaming is not dead, a lot of people don't have taste. And maybe if they stop playing the same cookie cutter AAA mess all the time, they would find a wealth and a plethora of games that would reignite their passion for gaming. Growing up, I played a lot of games. Actually, my very first video game was Sonic Adventure 1 on the Dreamcast, followed by Final Fantasy VIII, Heavy Metal Geo Matrix, Soul Calibur, Skies of Arcadia, Rayman 2, Dead or Alive 2, and then, a little while after that, the PS2 comes out. On there, I played all the Sly Cooper games, the Crash games, the Spyro games, every single Jack and Daxter game, Kingdom Hearts, I played Tony Hawk's Underground, I played a lot of Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man is great. You should play Spider-Man. I played the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. I played Metal Gear Solid. I played a lot of games. And I was fortunate enough, well, not me, but my family, were fortunate enough to be able to get me whatever game I would ask for at the time. Like, I saw that Shadow the Hedgehog came out and I was like, hey, Dad, can I have Shadow the Hedgehog? Same day. Got it for me. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 came out. I was like, hey dad, can they get that? Got it for me. Final Fantasy Dojo Cerberus came out. I was like, hey mom, can I get that? She got it for me. Not knowing what the fuck it was, but she got it for me, right? So, I was pretty well off, and I was introduced to both Eastern Japanese gaming and Western American style gaming uh, in my formative years. And I've got to say, it was pretty nice. Now, to be fair and honest, right? I didn't really like Call of Duty or Madden or 2K or any other sports game. Didn't get into Grand Theft Auto, but I did play a lot of fucking Halo. Halo was the shit, let me tell you. And so, having played all those games, it was like, damn, this is kind of neat. You know, having all this at my disposal and getting little bits and pieces of like everything you know it was cool i was very very fortunate to have access to that and then the very first introduction to what you would call modern day gaming as a wee lad came in the format of when i would want to discuss or engage in a video game conversation with my peers at the time the problem was that they would only, and I literally mean only, talk about 
Call of Duty, 2K, Grand Theft Auto, Mortal Kombat, and stuff like that. And I never really had an opportunity to join that conversation because when people would ask me what I play, I would say stuff like Suikoden, Fire Emblem, Chrono Trigger, Kingdom Hearts, and they'd be like, what is that? What did you just say? And it was then and there that I was like, oh, I guess we all don't actually play the same games. That's weird. And then that would also lead into a lot of my peers being like, oh, you like those weird Japanese games and you're not playing a real game. And then including G4 and other gaming networks at the time being like oh these weird Japanese games are so kooky and hoo hoo and ha ha and wacky and I'm like oh oh there is a really big divide here that I never knew of until now this is kind of awkward so unfortunately because of that outside of my main friend group I didn't really have people to talk about games with which sucked, but it is what it is. So moving past that, uh, we got our family computer, and I played a lot of MMOs. I played Mono Online, Elsword, Free Jack, Ion, Terra, Rusty Hearts, anything you could think of that came from overseas, I more than likely played it. I didn't have to deal with the divide amongst the gamers when it came to talking about different kinds of games because pretty much we all played similar things, right? Like, I even found people who played the PS2 Full Metal Alchemist games, some games that I and my cousin were the only people that knew of it. So that was pretty cool. I learned that there were a ton of Digimon games that I hadn't played yet, a bunch of Pokemon games that I hadn't played yet. I learned what Shin Megami Tensei was. From there, that was when I properly learned the term uh, modern gaming because around this time the Xbox 360 was out, PS3 was out, and that's when, at least amongst younger people, you would often hear gaming talk be Gears of War, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Assassin's Creed, God of War, and stuff like that. Not so much God of War, but still it found its way in the conversation here and there and again i didn't play those games because my bias was more along being oh there's a new final fantasy out oh there's a new kingdom hearts out oh there's a new fire emblem out oh what's the saga frontier series i don't know what that is i'm gonna play that you know i was replaying golden sun i was looking forward to the next pokemon game i was looking forward to the next final fantasy spinoff i was looking forward to the next metal gear solid game i was playing fantasy star online too still i was never able to participate in the wider spread gaming discussion because i wasn't playing when everyone else was playing which is fine you know i don't have a problem with that but it didn't much help as far as gaming conversation goes because when conversation is stifled and stagnated and you don't really have much of anything to talk about most of people you're like mm, nope i guess i gotta wait till i go home and get on my computer after doing my homework to talk to my people about you know the wider world of games because at least the people in my day-to-day -day irl life didn't partake in the wider world of games which is the most baffling thing to me imaginable but that leads into i'll say about 2016 2017 was when i first started hearing people go on about gaming is dead gaming isn't fun anymore and my initial opinion back then, because I was, admittedly, a very closed-minded individual when it came to hearing the opinions of other people, because my opinions were always shut out, I would ask a person, oh, well, what do you play? And if any of their responses included Call of Duty or Madden, 
I would just stop listening and tell them shut up to play other games. That led into the first drags of people saying that gaming is dead and I didn't really care about it then because I personally knew that it wasn't. However, that is also due in part to me widely shutting myself off to anything that wasn't a Eastern developed game or a game that came from Japan. And that's where my own fault lies in all of this. Round two. Point. So naturally, right? If I shut myself out from a problem that other people are experiencing, I'm not going to know anything about the problem that people are experiencing. And because I do like to see all sides of something, I figured, let me stop being a jerk and poke my head in to see the problem. And the problem was apparent immediately. The reason that people were saying that gaming was dead and it wasn't fun anymore all the way back in 2016, 2017, at least in the circles that I was in, the circles that I looked at, the problem was because they only played the same things all the time with zero variation. And when I noticed that, I said, oh, okay, now I understand. So then, out of the kindness of my heart and wanting people to enjoy gaming as someone who enjoyed games, I would try and nudge people in a certain direction like, hey, well, you know, uh, there's this over here that you haven't played yet. There's that over there that you haven't played yet. Why don't you give it a shot? And more often than not, people would say, no, I don't want to play this. I don't want to play that. And the other problem was that people were less willing to play a single player game in comparison to a multiplayer game like you know your shooters your online anything really that wasn't an mmo around that time a lot of people that i knew in person and outside of my mmo circles they didn't really want to play them when you have people that only want to play a very specific type of multiplayer game that too contributes to the problem and leads to people saying that this medium is dead that medium is dead etc 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 and through talking with a lot of people about how they particularly feel about the subject matter and taking the time to actually genuinely hear them out my stance eventually shifted from it's not that they don't want to play other games. It's that they can't find anything new that interests them. When you have the problem of things not interesting you, at that point, that's when you open up your eyes, open up your mind, and go looking out for certain things. That was when Fortnite came out. And that was a new genre that not a lot of people had gotten into or had experienced being the battle royale genre because my experience with that as far as pre fortnite goes all the way back to a game called s4 league and i played a lot of s4 league granted that wasn't so much a battle royale except for the chaser mode the chaser mode kind of felt like a battle royale thingy but so the battle royale genre hits the scene so we have your Fortnites, we have your PUBGs, have Realm Royales, we have your Apex, we have all that stuff. So that took out the gaming is dead conversation that people have because there was something new, there was something fresh. It was a multiplayer, it was a shooter, and it was fun. They were legitimately really, really, really fun because myself, as an example, I don't really play first person shooters gunfire reborn is a first person roguelike game love it but before that i only played halo on the xbox for my first person shooters and then apex comes out and i'm like oh this is cool i kind of like this this is pretty all right so that's something that really really helped people for quite a while but then the conversation of gaming is dead gaming is boring came back and we've 
come full circle because now with games like Fortnite and Apex and other subgenre type games hitting the scene, you have more and more people only playing that and not really wanting to deviate from the formula. And then they go right back to saying modern gaming is dead, modern gaming this, modern gaming that. As someone that does not frequently engage with the stereotypical modern gaming, because that has the tendency to include usually AAA projects. In recent years, the only major AAA projects I really got hyped up for was uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1, Marvel Spider-Man, and Final Fantasy 16. really. Uh, any other big AAA titles that came out within the last few years, like your uh, your Horizons, your Last of Us, your God of Wars, and other such adjacents, I didn't really care. Not from a perspective of, oh, that's trash, I'm not gonna play that. It was just, eh, it's not really interesting me. I did watch a few playthroughs of some games, but as far as playing them myself, nah, wasn't really feeling it. But those came out, and those began to show the real cracks in the modern gaming conversation, I would say. Not so much the Final Fantasies and the Spider-Mans. I mean, like, your Last of Us and the God of War and stuff like that. Because they were kind of one and the same in terms of not so much quality, but how they treat the player, I suppose. Because, heh, <laughs> it's kind of funny to say this, but older modern gaming really didn't do a whole bunch of hand-holding, or it wasn't a bunch of DLC, or it wasn't like, go here, go there. They, they treated the player like an actual human, but nowadays, you have unfinished games coming out, you have games that are more like expansions rather than newer releases. You have day one patches and day one DLCs and whatnot. You have games having hundreds upon hundreds of problems and they don't get fixed for quite a while. And then when you have, and I'm going to keep reiterating this, when you have more and more people that just don't want to experience things that are different, you're going to go right back to the whole, this is boring, that's not fun. Gaming is so different now, which to be fair, it is. However, the difference lies in what some people say about innovation, what some people say about art direction, what some people say about how games are just simply constructed these days. And this is the problem when people choose, willingly choose, to limit themselves to only playing AAA games. People wouldn't be saying things like gaming is dying or gaming isn't fun if they played stuff like Risk of Rain or, or, or A Dead Cell or A Devil May Cry or Gunfire Reborn or something like Valheim, which I very briefly played and I had a little bit of fun with. You know, hopping into the, the Final Fantasy XIV free trial Hopping into a genre that they avoid for whatever reason and just giving it on a shot. You know, playing a, a, a Mega Man or a Mega Man adjacent. There's so many things out there that single-handedly defeat the gaming is dead argument. However, I am keenly aware and I want to stress I am very, very aware of the fact that when the average person says that gaming is dead, they usually mean triple A modern gaming. That's what the average person means. There are a staggering number of people that say gaming as a whole is dead. And that, as I've said earlier, is where I personally have a problem with because all of gaming isn't dead. The problem is that people have such widely different scales of expectations and 
They want one thing to be like this. They want another thing to be like that. They don't want something to be like this. They don't want something to do what that thing did, but they also want all these other things. And in an era where game developers are more keenly listening to their fan base for better or for worse, um, you have some that want to put in their honest shot and give the people what they want. But then you have the ultra pretentious game devs that are just like, eh, well, even if we put out hot garbage, they'll still eat it up anyway, which happens to be true a lot of the time. And it leads to people like me and various other people saying to go play more games, go play a different kind of game, go look at something outside of what you normally get into. And maybe, just maybe, your opinion will change and stuff like that because another thing that's wrong with modern gaming and AAA gaming and stuff like that is that you often hear people saying that oh there's no innovation anymore it isn't this it isn't that and that's not the case at all the issue is that innovation isn't gone the focus is different it used to be what what really really baller thing can we make that people would just absolutely fawn over and talk about for ages it went from that to what can we make as cheap as possible with really really aggressive monetization that people are going to eat up regardless we're not going to do anything different but people go still act like this is the best thing since sliced bread. That's what it is these days. And that's what AAA modern gaming has really turned into. I wish that wasn't the case. I genuinely wish that wasn't the case. But again, as I expressed in the earlier section of this video, I play like almost everything. So... I don't have the debuff of feeling like gaming is stagnated and there's nothing to do, there's nothing to play, there's nothing new out there because I got my hands a little bit of everything, right? You know, there's a reason that the indie dev scene has been consistently blowing up, much to the dismay of a couple gaming journalization people, but there's a reason that the indie dev game scene has been blowing up because they're doing the stuff that the AAA people are asking for. They're doing the stuff that is cool and new and hip and awesome. But the problem is that no one wants to give them a shot. Like I said, I'm trying not to be super, super biased here, but I can't really ignore the fact that there are people out here who willingly choose not to engage with other game mediums and genres and then have the audacity to say that gaming isn't fun and gaming is boring at that point that's your fault if what i just said applies to you sorry to say but skill issue buddy you need to open your eyes and go play other things and speaking of other things this is the part where I'm going to include comments and bits and pieces from people that I have personally reached out to for their opinion about how do you feel when people say gaming is dead, gaming is boring, gaming isn't fun anymore.
When I hear someone talk about how gaming is dead, either one of two things pop into my head. You don't play games at all, or you only play the mainstream games. Because if we're going to be honest, if we're going to be realistic, is gaming dead? No. Everybody's just going outside. Everybody is touching grass again. So that's definitely not the case. Like we're not cooped up in our homes anymore. We, you know, we can go outside. The pandemic's still a thing, but mandates are gone. Lockdowns are gone. Everything is much better than what it was three years ago. So we aren't just cooped up twiddling our thumbs all day. We aren't sitting on the couch all day trying to look for a game to play to pass the time since we literally couldn't go outside. So gaming is not dead. Literally, there are there have been plenty of games that come out. Everybody talks about, oh, it, it, I don't want to play all these indie games. I don't want to do all this stuff. I don't want to play JRPGs. I don't want to do all this stuff. Like That's your fault. I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense that you say gaming is dead. And then you give people thousands of great games to recommend them. And they're like, this one's too long. I don't want to play this one. This one's mid. This one's bad. And you're the same person that sits there and commends gaming, game places like Rockstar and Take Two and all the other places that just repeat the same cycle. I played 2K. I, I, I have played 2K in the past. And I know what real bad microtransactions look like. I know what recycled content looks like. Look at 2K23. They, they copy and pasted the same card in the last season for about a month. So like, I know what bad games look like. And a lot of the times, you guys who just love sucking these companies off and just giving them your money for bad games. Question being, uh, do I think gaming is dead? Um, I don't think gaming is dead. I do think that there was a weird period of time where gaming was very stagnant. Um, but even then, I feel like it just kind of depends on what you were looking for. And I feel like that's the issue is that nobody looks for games that they want. They want everything kind of like brought to them. Um, and I feel like that's just with lifestyle. You know, we have streaming where, you know, if you want a streaming platform, they're like, this is a new thing. This is what everybody's watching. This is, you know, it's all here for you versus like, you know, with gaming, kind of have to you, you have to be aware of a certain game community or you know style of game or you know just whatever you have to like actively follow um and so i feel like that's where people kind of get lost because they don't um they're not looking um and i admittedly i haven't been like heavily into video games within the past few years but as of like recently um, I recently got back into, like, video games, and video games, for me, were always kind of a form of, you know, not only entertainment, but escapism, and I really enjoyed, like, expansive worlds, and learning about the world, and how the characters know each other, and how they're connected, and, you know, branching out those things, or games that follow a series where you learn more about the series and you get to do things that you know the series doesn't really get to explore you get to see the world in the series and see all these different characters and these little characters that are now big in this sense and you know things like that video games for me they they were like a social thing for me because i was terrible socially um as a child and they kind of were like you know the thing that made me excited the thing like that was my bonding point for some people um i even with family i was socially awkward but like if they were playing video games i would just want to sit and watch i didn't want to even like well of course i wanted to play as a kid but like i also was just like this is fine me sitting here and watching them play watching them advance through levels watching them you know do things in the game and then that even kind of led to me you know, developing social skills to some degree because I could then go like, oh, well, you know, how come this character is like this? Or how come they did this? Can you jump this way and not this way? You know, that type of thing. Um, and so I think that's kind of important, especially as someone venturing into the world of gaming as a child because it kind of makes you ask questions. It broadens your 
your sense of like who what where when and why like it makes you want to find things out and i feel like that also lends itself to you gathering information as you're an, as an adult like as an older person where it's like you um are learning how to navigate through certain systems and how to get to certain points not even just like playing the game but thinking about the game like you know if you're playing a puzzle game how do you get from this point to this point or if you're playing a fighting game like what timing what type of move do you have to make in order to win you know like it helps you problem solve it helps you navigate it it really moves your brain a little bit you know um in my original thought i was saying how i think gaming has been seen as dead or has dwindled because the lack of searching um and you know i feel like people just need to be a bit more experimental i think it's i think it sucks because it comes down to what do you want to spend your money on and you know that comes with time like being an adult like you only have so much money and it's like you know, people want to spend their money on a good time that they know is going to be a good time. So it's like if people, you know, they pay their rent, they pay their car, they pay their phone. And then it's like, damn, I only got this much money. You know, if I go to the bar, I know I'm going to have fun. You know, if I go to the bar, I know I want to have fun versus being like, I don't know about this game. I didn't really look into it. I heard it sucks. I heard it. You know, or like, you know, they'll probably be apprehensive in general if it's not a game that they're already familiar with. It's like 2K. Like, if they see 2K, they're like, mm, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to buy, you know, Street Fighter 6. Well, Street Fighter's kind of a unanimous game. But I don't know. Like, uh, Persona. You know, I don't know if I want to get this new Persona. Or I don't know if I want to venture into this Dragon Quest game. Because it's it's not something I'm familiar with. But, like, a Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter or a, you know, like, since, since there's something that's familiar for people you know, they can go, ah, okay, I'll check this out, because I'm aware of this, I've been with this franchise, I've, I've, you know, things like that, which I don't think is damaging, because, I mean, I feel like that is a part of it, is, like, um, you know, when you grow up with a game, you grow up with a franchise, I grew up with Tekken, um, and so, like, that's something that I'm always excited for, um, but I'm also not afraid to venture out into, different fighters Tekken is just my starter but then you know as I really get to learn Tekken you know I've ventured out into other like fighters uh like Blaze Blue Guilty Gear um you know King of Fighters is a given Virtue Fighter like it like once I got you know familiar enough with this one game it allowed me to expand and I feel like people don't do that you know I maybe and it could just be me this could all be biased um I've met some of my best friends through video games and the smallest smallest of instances of just us being into this really niche video game has gotten me friends for life and it was even before well it was probably around the same time but I wasn't online gaming I wasn't you know I I didn't have the money to online game but like for me to meet like friends through a very niche game i have met one of my best friends through you know kingdom hearts and it wasn't even like oh man this game is really great and i'm like wearing it on my chest you know it comes back to that social aspect i was speaking on where it's like we um both discovered socially like via like an icebreaker activity in the fourth grade that we both enjoyed kingdom hearts and it literally blossomed from then on and and that, and then that's kind of how a lot of the friend came together is via games and just like you know that joy of knowing that somebody else can understand your language and understand you know your love of a game or you know even just the smallest things like finding out I can relate to this person because they understand that that wonder and that awe I had or even if they didn't like even if I find out this person didn't like the game that I like it's like huh I wonder why and that still breeds that 
that that camaraderie and that friendship because you know you're just like this game is amazing blah 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 and you know maybe they'll try it again maybe they'll look at it differently now that they know it's associated with you um and i feel like honestly um i think sometimes that might even be the issue as to why certain things don't stick for you as an adult i i find that maybe there's an issue with adults gaming and i feel like it might be friendship you know i think sometimes people might feel like games are lonely or sometimes people might find that um the the social aspect of gaming is only so broad because you only play you know so many games and not to say that these games are bad but like a like a 2k or like a call of duty or you know whatever like if you're in on like solely a part of that that culture and that community if you're solely a part of this community um it it could get lonely if you find that your interest is only so high you know i've played 2k games and i don't really have an attachment to any of these players i don't really have an attachment to any of the statistical aspects of it or like you know i just kind of pick a team and go so i don't really know like this team is good this team is good i know generically like i can tell you like oh man the 8990 you know pistons won a championship so they're good or the 0405 pistons won a championship so they're good but that's as far as my knowledge goes and i don't really keep up with modern uh you know basketball and so in that community i would feel left out i would feel alone and sometimes i feel like maybe that's the issue with people who don't venture out into other games and that's probably why they feel like gaming is like trash or it's dead or it doesn't really matter because you know they only you know want to like like i said in the previous message they only want to you know play familiar games but then when the familiar the familiar game doesn't deliver then they're just kind of like well now what and and i think that could be like an issue and i feel like maybe it's just a matter of like finding community and maybe that's just the scary aspect of it all is like being involved in a community so heavily um and then finding out too that there are so many gaming communities um that exist just on the smallest of niches of levels you know when the pandemic happened and i st- i bought animal crossing um i found out there were so many little animal crossing communities i'm part of like three animal crossing discords and you know the animal crossing reddit and blah 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 there was a dude making like money selling animal crossing clothes like you know like for the community to be that knit together like i think that really shows like there's there's more out there it's just like exploring beyond that community that you've like put yourself into i feel like can be jarring and can be like a a scary experience but i feel like once it's done and like once you do it i feel like it's way way better oh no i really do um think gaming is still very fresh very alive um there's so many new you know games being made as we speak um the newest generation of you know systems have rarely not rarely have hardly like flourished yet like there's still so much to be done on these um like the ps5 and the uh the new xbox and you know all these like gaming systems are still moving and still evolving the switch just you know they did the oled switch and i think they're trying to you know introduce more technology with the switch um and you know computer gaming has always been vast and huge um and so i feel like there's only still so much to explore for people and i think it really just takes people giving their their time and their um you know their want and letting that curiosity get to them you know even if it is just downloading a bunch of demos that you're probably not gonna actually buy the game for but just like experiencing something that is not the norm of like what you're used to or that's not you know something that you're so familiar with to the point where it takes you out of the game or you can't really you know immerse yourself that and i feel like maybe even if you see somebody else play it if people were to 
you know, get into gameplay videos or walkthroughs and things like that and just see a little bit of it. I, I mean, it's vastly different from having it in your hand, but I feel like even if it's just peaking an interest in the game or in, you know, that like style of gaming or that gaming community, um, I think that can really, really bring people back around to understanding that, you know, gaming is obviously still full of life. Uh, I mean, there's still gaming tournaments and there's gaming... T there are Tekken 8 tournaments and Tekken 8 hasn't even came out yet. You know, so like, you know, people are competitively playing Tekken 8. Um, yeah, and, you know, I feel like people just need to, like, step out of their bubble and really just experiment and try new things, which is very generic to say, but, I mean, it's, it's the truth. Okay, yeah, so I am answering this initial question about uh, gaming. You know, to be 100% honest, like, I think that people who say gaming is dead really just aren't choosing to engage with gaming in, like, a meaningful way or a critical way. I think that's just, like, a very surface level or, like, superficial answer. It's an easy answer to give. It's an easy cop-out. And, and I think where you really start is what type of media are you consuming and how deliberate you are what what games you choose to consume and choose to like devote your time to are you the type of person that is buying every 2k release from 2k 16 all the way to 2k 23 sure if you top from 2k 16 to 2k 23 you'll probably see a major improvement but if you are consistently going throughout 19 20 21 22 23 you you're not going to get a real quality of life game because that game is based or games like that are really based on just consumption and continuous consumption until the new product comes out similar to like an iphone but I really believe that the gaming industry has like so many really cool gems that people are, if you if you just take a look at, people really are open to showing you quality storytelling and really open to giving you uh, more than what you pay them and more than what your money is worth when they, when they give you a product. Think about something from one of my favorite uh, video game developers like super giant like everybody loves hades but um specifically i love transistor which is a game that they came out uh prior before hades and you can play that game a number of times it, in fact i would say in order to like fully enjoy that game and the story uh as a whole you have to play the game and complete it around three to four times like new games plus to get all the like the achievements or like get all the abilities to continuously engage but the story the nuance the soundtrack from the art direction is something where like the game continuously is a gift that keeps on giving and, and i just I, I don't think a lot of people take the time to like look for games like that i think people are so quick to be yo here's what this ign article told me i should get Here's what this Game Informer article told me I should get, and I'm gonna play this game, and then if it doesn't meet my standards, I'm gonna bitch and complain about it. And that's not to shoot down anybody, you know, at those companies because they've been around for a while because they do work, right? But it is to say that there's so many titles and communities out there that if you just take the time to sit down and analyze like what you really want out of a story what you really want out of a game i think you'd be surprised on like what you can genuinely find now there was one final piece to this gaming is dead argument that i'm going to talk about and this one really personally gets under my skin because this is the kind of game that is literally driven by your imagination and if you do not have imagination then there's a problem and the game medium that i'm discussing it's tabletop stuff. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what do you mean by tabletop? I mean your Dungeons and Dragons, your Warhammers, your Pathfinders, your Starfinders, your Cyberpunks, your Curse of Strahd, your horror games, your fun, wacky, woohoo games. The games where you go on like a PDF website or you go to Roll20 and you find something, set something up, you get something going. I also mean stuff like matches gathering and card games and stuff like that. But I was specifically focusing on things that involve dice and chance and imagination to say 
that the tabletop gaming genre is dead is bull genuinely because a game medium that was made into existence by someone's imagination that is driven by imagination and if you don't have imagination you can at least follow a book a pdf a piece of paper you can follow something but the people who say that medium is dead have the same ill habits as those who only go looking for a certain type of game a certain genre of game a certain style of game a certain edition of game don't sit up here and say that tabletop gaming is dead because you personally cannot find a group you personally cannot find people that want to play the edition of Dungeons and Dragons that you want to play you cannot personally find the absolutely twisted Warhammer thing you can conjure up you cannot find the crazy Pathfinder game that may or may not be in existence you can't find people that want to play your specific type of game should you be a dungeon master that's not tabletop gaming's fault at some point you gotta understand oh shit I might be the one wrong here because with the recent surge in popularity that has come to tabletop gaming as a whole, it's like, oh, hey, people want to play the game for the first time. Oh, hey, Dungeon Masters are looking to run some games. Oh, hey, there are longtime players looking for new people to play with. You know, there is a world and a wealth of possibilities out there for a game that is literally driven by the player's imagination. And to say that that is dead, no screw that fuck that that when we're not we are not doing that i've also seen people say that oh dungeons and dragons is dead because wizards of the coast and hasbro they're doing some really stupid horrible things that's more like a corporate problem and not like a gamer problem we're gonna focus on the gamer side of the problem for now okay i've played dungeons and dragons for quite some time i've dabbled in a little bit of warhammer i've looked at pathfinder haven't played a pathfinder game yet I was going to play a cyberpunk game, but that fell through. I had fun because it was like, oh, my actions, what I decide my player does dictates how things are going to work out. Oh, that's tight. That's cool. And when I, as a player, stopped being able to find campaigns and sessions and stuff that were looking for other people that was like more tuned to what I was looking for, I was like, hmm, maybe. I'll try my own hand at being a dungeon master. So then I proceeded to spend five and a half months making my own Final Fantasy styled homebrew campaign, complete with a rule book, complete with gameplay, complete with anything you could think of is in there. I spent a lot of time working on that. And if you take a look at one of the many playlists that I have on my YouTube channel, and you can find every single recorded session. And that was because I was like, hmm, I really like Dungeons and Dragons. I want to play more Dungeons and Dragons, but I also want to tell my own story. And I also want to try and see if I can make something that works in the style of Final Fantasy. Oh, hey, the power of imagination is going on haywire today, baby. When I did that, then I was like, hmm. I want to make another homebrew style system. Oh, I really like the Legend of Hero series. Oh, I really like the Yeast series. Hmm, what if I did something with that? And that's still a work in progress, but it's still something that for the time being exists, you know? And this is the thing that trips me up. And, and, and I'm gonna keep repeating myself because this is really worth repeating for a game style that is driven off of imagination. How can you say that that format is dead? How can you say that you can't find this and you can't find that? If you can't find something that fits your specific needs, either make your own thing or go join someone else's group and just deal with the rules of that group. Because, you know, we already have enough horror stories on Reddit and YouTube about players and DMs doing some really crazy out of pocket stuff. All in all, my point for this final segment is when it comes to something like tabletop gaming, there are so many forms and systems out there outside of the ones that I named. I, I could go search on Google right now, tabletop gameplay or tabletop PDFs or homebrew stuff. There's a whole wiki for homebrew stuff. You can 
you can even make your own thing. Like, if you're not fighting something that works for you, make your own. It's not hard. It's going to take some time, but it's not hard. It's really not. And this is a medium that, to be fair and transparent, I haven't been engaged with super, super, super long. But for the time that I have spent engaging with it, playing with it, reading the books, talking to people, going out to play games, going out to conventions and whatnot, and finding the tabletop area and just sitting down and chatting it up with some people over there and playing in their games. I haven't been in it that long. It's still something that I like a lot. And because of how much I like it, it equally infuriates me and fills me with such an undescribable rage to see people say, oh, it's dead and this and this and that and I can't find this and I don't like this, I don't like that. That's a personal problem, truly, at the end of the day. And the only person that can fix that is you, not pestering people and harassing people into playing exactly what you want to play. In summary, tabletop gaming is certainly not dead. Hello, congratulations, you made it to the end of this video. Well, like I said at the very beginning, this is my very first uh, video essay, but I just wanna give you an extra special thank you for watching all the way to the end. And if you would like to see more of me in any capacity, I do stream on everything. I do make content on everything. And outside of working on this video project, which did take me about almost four full weeks to do non-stop, I do my best to stream at least three days out the week. I do my best to upload at least one YouTube video every week. And if you are so inclined, to throw a couple dollars my way. I do have a Ko-Fi, I do use stream loot, I have uh, affiliate status on Twitch, and I am working to attain a monetized YouTube channel, at least as far as my streams go, because that way I can also have like channel memberships enabled on YouTube, and when I get that done, then I can work towards having a fully monetized YouTube channel and then we can really get the ball rolling. But, like I said, thank you a million, million times over for watching this all the way through to the end because I know that this was long. And if you go through the rest of my YouTube catalog, I don't normally post things that are this long. But this was a topic that I felt really really strongly about and so I figured hey I have the capacity to make videos I have the capacity to talk about something I'm passionate for and let's just get her done so here we are at the end thank you one more time and I will see you the next time that I see you take care of yourself drink some water and the next video essay that I'm going to work on will be Sonic related and hopefully, probably not, that one will be on the shorter side. Take care of yourself.